the goat, whose fleece is known throughout the world as Kashmir, lives most inconsiderately in one of the most remote and barely accessible spots on Earth, on barren mountains far beyond the Himalayas. This is where the story of Kashmir, a story which has become a legend, begins. Here in the mountains, the soft fleece of the Kashmir goat is combed out, and the wool begins its long, arduous journey, first to the Asiatic ports, and then to the mills of Scotland. Nearly two years the journey takes, on the backs of many different animals, on rafts and rowboats, and by overhead mountain railway. These slopes have known the awe-inspiring cries of fierce Mughal warriors, and have shuddered under the pounding of marauding horsemen. So the legend of the Kashmir Fleece is a wild one for these haunted parts. Yet legend it is, for the famous wool has travelled this same exhausting route for more than seven centuries. This then is the first part of the Kashmir story. The incredible two-year journey westwards to the greener countryside of Scotland, where for nearly 200 years the knitting industry has led the world. This is a country steeped in traditions, not the least important of them being that set up here at Hoyk by Robert Pringle in 1815. For he began a new tradition in knitwear quality, a tradition carried on by generations of the same families working in this factory. Their pride in their work, like the cashmere thread itself, is dyed in the wool. This is the plain frame, but he'd say the name something of a misnomer for it is here that the body of a sweater is fully fashioned. Yes, fully fashioned all the way from the rib waist up. A technique common enough wherever the finest silk stockings are made, but only in Hoyk is such an elaborate process applied to every single garment. Look at the side seams of your Pringle sweaters, which are being knitted here and you will see how the fashioning marks extend right from the rib waist to the armhole. You will find those same telltale fashioning marks in the sleeves. They are the hallmarks of a fully fashioned garment. Femininity is patterned into every stitch by these machines. Individual shapeliness right from the waist to the neckline. The skill of the workers is much in evidence on these so-called seaming or linking machines. It is here that the backs and fronts of the sweaters are joined together. Not a single stitch may be dropped or a ladder drop stitch would result. That's something they'd be ashamed for you to find in the products of this mill. Hand knitting machines have an important part to play even in this age of power machinery. Indeed, the hand of a craftsman is indispensable wherever intricate detail is needed. He's tickling over the stitches, or in basic English, altering his stitches to meet the needs of an exacting design. Without the infinitely variable adjustments of this machine, seen in slow motion, we could not easily prepare the oddly shaped trimming parts needed for, say, a dressmaker sweater. With our sweater safely put together, two most important processes now take place. First, the fine cashmere garments are carefully scoured to take all the spinning oil away. Then they are rinsed in specially softened water. And now milling, the most delicate process in the whole manufacture. This is what puts into a cashmere sweater its wonderful softness. A minute too long, a minute too short, and the result would be imperfection. This is one of the industry's most skilled jobs. So, to the moth proofing process, which represents a triumph of scientific research. Moths are estimated to cause losses of over a million pounds annually in the United States alone. They are a hazard against which a Pringle sweater deserves protection. Knitted and linked and scarred and moth-proofed, the garments have earned the short rest they now get. They're being fitted to wooden shapes or boards on which they'll dry to exact size and shape, an operation known reasonably enough as boarding.
boarding house is a sort of anteroom to the drying chamber into which they now pass and where they'll dry naturally in carefully regulated heat. At every step, as you can see, the utmost care is taken to ensure that these Pringle sweaters have no excuse but to give satisfaction. Already, what may be called character has been knitted into this golfer cardigan. Now, with the first of its finishing touches, it starts to measure up to elegance. Pringle sweaters are not mass-produced, and it is at this point that craftsmanship counts for so much. Craftsmanship inherited from generations back, which puts confidence as well as skill into her hands. Notice how her scissors cut straight down the whale of the stitch. This is the individual touch which no machine can replace. Where the scissors left off, the linking machines now take over again. Stitch by stitch, the finely shaped necks are bound on. First, one side of the rib neck, then the body of the garment in between, and finally, the other side of the rib neck. When all this is done, the loose edges will be cleaned off by hand. And now, buttonholes. Notice how the stitching goes round, not once, but twice. Right to the tiniest details, these sweaters are made to keep their shape. Incidentally, as many as 4,000 buttons a day can be put on by highly skilled operatives. This was just one process which impressed Princess Margaret very deeply when she visited Hoy. Handwork, which cannot be rivaled by any machine, is done in this room and ranges from the sewing on of simple name tabs to the most intricate of dressmaker styles where ability and years of practice show in the results. So, young and old work expertly side by side, and the secrets of their womanly craft are handed on. In the stockroom, the garments are sorted and labelled for dispatch, and here, rejection awaits any garment which is not absolutely perfect. This stockroom is, in fact, a showplace in its own right, where colour, texture and fine craftsmanship combine to delight the eye. Finally, William McTaggart, the managing director, makes more snap checks before the garments are sent out, as perfect as unending care and vigilance can make them. Is this the end of the cashmere story? For some of the millions who wear cashmere, perhaps it is, but not for those whose care of the fine soft garments provides the last chapter, the happy ending. Care with cashmere means having consideration for the quality of the wool. It means using a pure soap or a reliable detergent in moderate quantity and washing the garments in lukewarm water. Washing, of course, means not rubbing, but gently squeezing the soap suds through the fabric. Rinsing calls for the same careful handling. Three rinses at least are needed, all of them in warm, but never boiling water. Squeeze gently instead of twisting, and it will be easy to stretch your Pringle garment into its exact shape afterwards. Rinsing must be thorough but light-handed. If more than three rinses are needed to get all the soap out, be generous to a deserving possession. Left wet, but not soaking, cashmeres dry best away from fires and radiators. Throughout, the emphasis must be on gentleness. Afterwards, the reward is a garment still soft and luxurious, still perfect in shape and size. The story of cashmere never ends with care like this.
for every time it is worn, it keeps alive a legend of enterprise, skill, and patient workmanship. We have told the story of Kashmir from start to finish. Now over to historic Edinburgh to tell our tale in a different way, by example. These ramparts of Edinburgh Castle once knew the clamor of armored men, but the modern miss parades a gentler fashion, with protection only from the elements in her elegant snug coat or easy heavy ribbed cardigan jacket. Blended in this casual parade are two long histories, for the legend of Edinburgh Castle is a match for that of Kashmir. The castle stood here long before one British sovereign was recognized, as she is today with ceremony when she visits the ancient city. Now, when the Queen takes up annual residence at Holyrood, a special guard is ceremoniously mounted. On Carlton Hill stand these Doric columns, raised to commemorate Scottish participation in the Peninsular War. As bold as their backcloth are the Fiesta Red clipped cardigan and aquamarine afternoon sweater of these two students of history and style. Two other ambassadresses from Hoyk pay court to the past, but show an equal reverence for the fashionable present in a new full-length sweater and restyled twin set. Classic columns and classic cashmeres meet on equal terms, bonded by simple, sure artistry. Architecture, as striking as the Great Fourth Bridge, is reflected in these adventurous cashmeres. Stripes take the plunge of the pullover neatly over the pitfalls of daring fashion while the full button jacket adds to the quayside coquetry of these contrasting slacks. With these to catch a waterman's eye, there's little danger here of missing the riverboat. Colorful and varied as a list of cocktails, the range of cashmeres can fill every hourglass to the brim, spilling cheerfully into the evening or the night. Fashion is well served after dusk at the bar or silver laid dining table with such simple but stylish stuff as this evening sweater with scalloped neckline. A rival for the later hours is a quietly appealing twin set. Those demurely cupped three-quarter sleeves disguise as sophisticated a fashion style as any date could call for. A far cry this scene from the rugged mountains of distant Asia yet only the most perfect evening could match the romantic story of the world's softest wool, the Kashmir story. <laughs>